If you're new to Artist Alley and you're currently researching on what Artist Alley must haves to bring for your next convention, then this video might just be for you. Hi friends, my name is Raisa. I am the artist behind the name Kiko Paints. I've been vending at conventions part-time since 2023, and it is something that I love doing whenever I'm not on the clock working as a nurse. In this video, I will be sharing items people frequently forget to bring at conventions, and most of these items you probably already have at home, so hear me out. Let's get started. Having clear signages of your prices is always the best thing to have for your potential customers so they know how much your products cost. However, things happen and you might forget to bring your price signages and that's when sticky notes come in handy. Sticky notes are very important for writing down important information such as your prices, low stock or sold out items. I have so many leftover sticky notes from my previous projects and from my job that I rarely have to buy more. In addition to that, I also have the circle adhesive labels I got at an office supply store. These small adhesive labels come in very handy if I have to write down specific information or prices in a small piece of paper. A standard black permanent marker is very useful for writing important information on your sticky notes. I have metallic markers as well because some attendees that buy prints from my table would ask me to sign the prints they bought and having metallic markers come in very handy. It looks professional, it's shiny, it dries fast and does not smudge. A bundle of three markers is usually about less than $10. You can find them in any school or office supply store near you. In my opinion, having this tape is a game changer. It is a 3M brand, light to carry, durable, and it is so long at 164 feet, guaranteed to last you a very long time. I mainly use this to stick my print displays on my grid cubes. Some people use magnets to display their prints on their grid cubes, but I am not a fan of them personally. I simply do not like seeing small magnets all over my prints as I find it really distracting. Also, it can be really tricky to place them and you could easily lose some pieces if you're not extra careful. Using double-sided tape gives your print displays a cleaner look in my opinion. You can also guarantee that your prints will not fall off with these since they're very durable. The downside is it can destroy your prints when you remove them from your grid cubes so do proceed with caution. If you're worried about damage to your print displays, some people use painter's tape or regular tape to stick them onto the grid cube displays. Though my prints usually fall off with these, so I don't personally use them. If you do not mind using magnets, they are good alternatives as well. This double-sided tape I use is about $20 on Amazon. Magnets are less than $10 on Amazon, but it could vary depending on the amount of magnets you're looking for. Shout out to artist The Starfish Face. I learned about this specific type of portable charger in their anime Frontier vlog. This 4-in-1 portable charger has a built-in wall plug, USB-A port, USB-C, and micro port. It's compact, slim, and can support different devices. No need to worry about forgetting your charging cables since this is already attached to a couple of them. I use my phone and my iPad a lot at conventions and this portable charger has saved my life multiple times. One portable charger lasts me a long time, though I always carry two with me just in case, so I have a backup for my backup. I make sure to charge them after convention hours so I can be prepared for the next day. The only downside I can think of is the cables are short, otherwise a great investment in my opinion. This portable charger is about $35 on Amazon. If you're traveling via plane for an out-of-state convention, consider buying a portable hanging digital luggage scale. Weighing your bags is important if you want to avoid the hefty fees airlines charge for overweight bags. This luggage scale is so compact and lightweight. Not only this can be useful for your out-of-state conventions, you can also use this for your personal trips. This luggage scale is about $10 on Amazon. Every time I fly to a convention, I'm always worried that my luggage is gonna get lost or stolen or someone grabbing my luggage by accident. And this is why I bought AirTags for my peace of mind. 
Obviously, AirTags won't prevent your bags from getting lost or stolen, but with AirTags, I'll be able to locate it at least when it happens. You don't have to wait for your next out-of-state convention to get air tags because you can always use this in any local convention as there's always a chance of theft in any convention that you go to. I know air tags are for Apple users, so if you're team Android, let me know in the comments section what alternatives we can have. A set of Fort air tags is about $100 on Amazon. Let's be real, convention chairs are probably one of the least comfortable chairs in the world. As someone who's had to deal with chronic back pain and had to get physical therapy to manage it, I never go to conventions without my seat cushion. It's soft, comfortable, and provides the back relief I need. Keep in mind that artist alley hours range from 6 to 10 hours a day, so having a seat cushion is a great investment in my opinion. Not only do I carry one with me at conventions, I also have another one or my office chair here at home. The disadvantage of seat cushions is it can be somewhat bulky to travel with. However, I'd rather sacrifice a portion of my luggage to fit my seat cushion if it means not being in pain for three to four days. Seat cushion prices vary depending on the brand, but the one I have is about 30 to $40 on Amazon. You cannot work at conventions for a long time if you do not take care of yourself and that is why I think every artist should have a health kit or a first aid kit of their own. If you haven't realized, preparing for conventions is a lot of work and can make your immune system low even before the convention. Spending those sleepless nights just to rush that new art, followed by interacting with hundreds of customers and a big crowd in general for hours on end. Plus, you're doing this for three to four days of the con. Not to mention if you're traveling to a different state or to a totally different country if you're an international artist. Conventions can be a petri dish of illnesses. To protect yourself from con crud or any respiratory diseases such as COVID or flu, I always advise masking at all times. I always bring with me at least one face mask for each day and I make sure that I cover my nose, mouth, and chin. You're also dealing with handling cash from other people and paper money can harbor thousands of microbes. Having a hand sanitizer is very helpful at Artist Alley. And not just any sanitizer, make sure that the sanitizer is at least 60% alcohol-based to give yourself adequate protection. I also recommend packing a few more health essentials in a small pouch or container. Pain relievers, vitamins, and other medicines such as antacids, antihistamines, cough or cold medicines are some of the common ones you should consider packing. I also carry with me band-aids for unexpected cuts, wet wipes, and feminine pads just in case. Even if you might not need these things, a table neighbor or a friend might. You want to be able to help them. As someone who chose to juggle a full-time job and doing conventions part-time, it is important for me to be as organized as I can be. If you want to see a full set of my supplies that I use for my artist alley needs, check the link in the description below. My list is meant to be used as a guide, so feel free to make a copy of this list and you can customize it however you need it. Keep in mind to do your own research when you're looking for items that you need for your artist alley needs as some of these products that I have might not work best for you. Artist alleys are a lot of work and preparation and these items have helped make my artist alley life less stressful. What are your biggest artist alley investments? I'd like to know them in the comments section below. If this has helped you in any way, please consider liking this video and subscribe to my channel for more artist alley content. See you in the next video.